Hello and welcome to this digital conversation we are having at ORF with two very distinguished personalities from India's Defence Forces. Uh, we have with us uh, Admiral Arun Prakash and we have Lieutenant General Dipinder Singh Huda. Uh, Lieutenant General Huda led, uh, he planned and executed the surgical strikes. Uh, welcome to both of you. So, uh, what we thought of discussing is, does the Indian Army, the Indian Navy, the Indian Air Force, basically the defense establishment, have any role uh, in helping India combat the outbreak of COVID-19? We can start with uh, Admiral Prakash. Well, uh, aid to civil power, when requested by the civil administration is a very important part of the armed, role of the armed forces. Uh, so the armed forces are always ready and humanitarian assistance and disaster relief, the, all the actions required for it are actually subsumed in the operational training that we do for ourselves. And this was amply proved in 2004 when the great Asian tsunami took place. Uh, in fact, the Navy went into action without even being prompted by the government of the day. At that point of time, we swung into action within hours. Our ship sailed out, we sent our helicopters, aircraft, and within a matter of hours, we were rendering succor to not only to our own countrymen on the East Coast and in the islands, but also to Sri Lanka, Malay, uh, Maldives, and Indonesia. So the, the role of the armed forces is such that um, events like humanitarian disasters are uh, almost subsumed within their normal training and equipment and so on. So they are well prepared for it, but the request has to come from the central government. Uh, in this case, I thought it would have been an ideal situation to ask the armed forces to at least stand by because this is uh, nothing short of a war if we are really beset by a huge catastrophe or that it promises to be. So one wonders, there must be some good reason why the government is holding back. Sorry to interrupt you. General Huda, do you think something is missing this time? Uh, not really. Admiral Prakash said that during the great tsunami, you did not wait for government orders. You know, it happens in all sort of uh, immediate catastrophic events. So we've had the 2005 earthquake uh, at Uri. Uh, we've had the 2016 floods in Jammu Kashmir. I was actually personally involved in, in both of them. Uh, and again, you know, you don't wait for instructions and then you straight away start your immediate rescue and relief operations and that happens. I think we need to look at this uh, slightly differently about what is happening, uh, you know, the, the COVID-19 uh, epidemic. And whether you want to uh, immediately pitch the defense forces uh, into, into, you know, uh, kind of uh, relief or do you want to keep them back as an emergency and uh, right now, you see the capacity which is there out in the in the civil health sector uh, has not yet been sort of fully tapped. And uh, my personal opinion is, uh, you know, where does the army, uh, the air force, the navy uh, sort of specialize uh, is in handling emergency situations. So, would you like to keep, for example, the field hospitals, uh, which are able to quickly mobilize and go into remote areas? or a contingency where you have an outbreak in areas where public health infrastructure is weak and do you utilize the army in those areas, uh, navy in those areas, or do you want to utilize that capacity now and immediately? So as, uh, as Admiral Arun Prakash is saying, I'm sure the army is on standby. The army chief, uh, all the service chiefs have said that they're prepared. But do you want to pitch them into into situation immediately and, and, and utilize that capacity or maybe keep it back for emergency, as I said, in some areas where public health facilities are weak. So I, that's a decision I think we need to take. Pushan, uh, there is a point in this that our health services are not yet stretched to uh, the proverbial breaking point. But uh, the police services are really stretched and we have seen that in the last uh, seven, ten odd days. Uh, maybe uh, army mobilization could have helped with something like the migrants crisis, I mean, it just happened. It was like a flash mob that appeared and uh, the police was just, uh, uh, you know, uh, it, was, it was overwhelmed. So something missing somewhere? 
आई थिंक आदमी प्रकाश मेरा फेयर पॉइंट यू नो मीन दर्म फोर्सेज ड्यूरिंग दर ट्रेनिंग डू से ट्रेन टू एड सिविल अथॉरिटीज वेन एन नीड एंड वेन आस्ट फॉर Uh, as far as the army goes, uh, there have been a number of times that they have mobilized without being asked. They have been asked a number of other humanitarian assistance uh, things, but there's the issue of also this ask is all always happens when civil authorities are completely stretched. Uh, currently, it doesn't seem like any of the medical facilities or logistical facilities are stretched. But it would be a fair point to make that you know maybe it is time to ask the armed forces to start preparing for such contingencies. given the way that this virus has been spreading all over the world uh, you know the army is well placed or all the defense services are well placed to support public services you know is it a good time to get the core of engineers to start drawing plans on how they can increase uh, medical facilities is it a good time to start asking the army medical corps to start uh, maybe bolstering uh, testing capacity or screening capacity of certain civil hospitals or hotspots that are occurring so uh, it is a resource that is up to the government to use but uh, as you said i mean yes the lockdown was botched and maybe yes uh, if not the army at least there are other central paramilitary forces police forces which could have been used uh, to aid civil authorities the police in helping this lockdown admiral prakash there is a suggestion uh, that uh, the national disaster management authority of india Uh, should not be an entirely civilian authority that the defense forces should be made a part of it and you know the a structural uh, inclusion so that they can also give their inputs their suggestions and their uh, uh, you know drawn from their own experience of handling emergency situations would you agree to this inclusion yes i agree completely with the suggestion because the first of all the ndama is a policy making authority it it's it is not a force it has it has under it a ndrf a force which is totally um, police manned and police commanded it's got 12 battalions for 30 states of all over india uh whereas the army the armed forces have much greater resources but i would go a step further back and say why not include the armed forces in the pl- at the planning stage now if there is a crisis or an emergency the armed forces have a process called a uh, appreciation of the situation or a commander's estimate where you take all factors into account you visualize what the enemy is likely to do in this case it's a pandemic so what is the worst case scenario that it's going to present to us and then you work out all the options available to us and you place these before the government the administration has to take your option what you want to do had this process been followed when we we foresaw this threat looming over us perhaps our reaction would have been much better so i think the armed forces should be included it's a citizen army we belong to, to the country uh, and secondly note when, when the first lot of the evacuation was the many of the evacuation was done with the indian air force the isolation camps are all organized and manned by the armed forces one in manesar one in visakhapatnam one in bombay so use the armed forces they have the skills they have the resources they have disciplined manpower and they can get trained to foresee the unforeseen and, and uh, offer you options for it general huda so uh, shall shall we say that it would be a good idea to include the defense forces in the national um, uh, disaster management authorities a uh, structural part that you know uh, when they, when they are framing policy when they are dealing with a uh, emergency situation like the one we are witnessing right now so the army input or the defense input is constantly there i completely agree uh, with uh, what admiral anup prakash has said i think one of the weaknesses is uh, as he also pointed out you know the joint planning between the ndma and the assets that they have ndrf and the military Uh, to me is uh, well almost almost completely missing uh, and unless structurally these two uh, sort of organizations get together uh, our response is not going to be very good see the military has tremendous capacity uh, in expertise uh, medical facilities engineers aviation the navy has has ships which can you know sail out uh, in the region and and help out with with this Uh, but uh, i have rarely seen uh, joint planning 
joint policy making uh, being done between the between the ndma uh, and the military authorities uh, i remember in, when i was in udampur in, uh, in jammu and kashmir we used to regularly have meetings with the civil administration uh, we used to draw up disaster re relief plans before each winter because uh, you know snow tsunamis etc keep happening in those areas but we rarely found the presence of uh, the ndma or the ndrf in these plans so if you want to actually you pull in all our resources effectively i think uh, the military needs needs a large place in the whole ndma ndrf structure a linked uh, question to this is that india has been offering aid and assistance to other countries to overcome the covid-19 crisis now who delivers this aid who delivers this assistance uh, do we divert civilians for doing this job or do we entrust it to the defense forces because they have the capacity they have the manpower they have the wherewithal they have the logistics support how how do we figure it out uh you know i mean uh, uh, as the admiral and general pointed out you know there are huge capacities which exist in the military to mobilize in emergency situations and humanitarian assistance in disaster relief situations uh you know why are, why is the military an attractive option to deal with uh, such emergencies uh, you know domestically and internationally uh you know firstly i mean you know it's a disciplined force it is generally a self supporting manpower uh, so you know when the military goes in you know you don't need to uh, worry about you know what are the logistics going to be how are these you know 1000 men 2000 men going to sustain themselves it's a self contained unit so uh, the military in fact has already uh, i know we are the the role of the military has not been highlighted uh, so far but you know the first set of evacuations that were done from uh, wuhan uh, when covid 19 broke out was done by the indian air force uh, yes a majority of it has been done by the indian airlines but the indian air force has also been doing it um i believe a military team or a naval team has already deployed to uh, the maldives to render assistance uh, with covid-19 uh, to a certain degree uh, if you follow the news every day the in air force aviation naval aviation has been playing a key logistical role in you know, delivering samples transferring doctors and supplies uh, you know in the logistics chain already in support of the initiative that is being taken by the by the by the government but but at the bottom of it the military is extremely well placed to you know help project uh, india's uh, image and position as an international and responsible regional player uh, where it is uh, you know assistance uh, on acceptable grounds to other countries so it's important politically and economically for india to build those relations by providing aid in the region and the military is extremely well placed to do it because of the capacities that exist in its engineering corps medical corps and even its normal uh, force structures admiral prakash uh, till now the government seems to have managed it well i mean uh, given the size of the country the diversity the distances plus health being a state subject uh, and state governments have been trying to coordinate with each other and all the state governments have been trying to coordinate with the central government Uh, are you are you okay with the way things have unfolded till now or do you think as, as a defense from a defense perspective uh, things could have been done differently or even better well there are obviously two view points one the optimistic view point is that india has surprised the whole world by you know by not succumbing so rapidly as other countries have perhaps we are lucky perhaps the temperature the humidity maybe our natural resistance will see us through this huge uh, uh, looming uh, catastrophe but if you if you look at the worst case scenario which as a as a military person i would i would look at the what we call the enemy's worst course of action most dangerous course of action and that is as predicted by some uh, studies is that in, from middle of april till end of may we could have 3 to 5 crore crore sick people of which maybe 20 to 30 lakh will require hospitalization and many will die i mean i say i say this with great hesitation but should this happen then all this rosy picture that you are painting about everyone coping fine will just collapse overnight we will our medical services will be overwhelmed so should we wait for that to happen or should we not prepare for that if it doesn't happen if we can all go home happily but if it happens suddenly our medical personnel we have not been able to provide them with protective equipment clothing today is the 1st of april we knew this was coming from january 
masks are in short supply ventilators i believe there are only 70000 i don't know so this is a time for emergency measures and there is a director general of armed forces medical services with a huge set of resources at his disposal tell him to and stand by and move in if required if not required ore <clears throat> general huda your comments see i'm again uh, you know what admiral anand prakash is saying is, uh, is is right uh, we have controlled it and i think uh, you could give credit to the government for now that uh, they managed to uh, control the situation not like in other countries but public health services are completely completely sort of uh, overwhelmed uh, but should we sort of rest on our laurels uh, i think there are huge shortfalls uh, in, in terms of uh, medical capacity in terms of medical equipment even basic things like masks the requirement of ventilators i i remember reading somewhere that uh, the punjab chief minister when the whole thing broke out said in the 22 district hospital he has only 26 ventilators so should we start preparing these uh, on a sort of war footing uh, relook our, our all production uh, you know sort of facilities to gear up for for medical equipment uh, and of course uh, i am aware that uh, in the at least in the army uh, most of the hospitals have set aside uh, some places and some beds uh, for for uh, you know covid patients if can that happens but maybe much greater mobilization uh, would be required in the future uh, pushan uh, this this is slightly this could be slightly contentious uh, but in our country the presence of the defense forces i mean when i say presence it means uh, perceptionally present uh, has a reassuring calming effect and uh, which is very important given the manner in which uh, the uh, emergency is unfolding the situation is unfolding do you think it would have been a good idea to to sort of uh, have the defense forces out there in public spaces um, and and making people feel assured or reassured that that the government is on the top and that it has the situation in command and people need not worry i mean there are two ways you can sp- uh, spin spin this i mean one is i mean yes seeing the army out on the streets sometimes does draw in certain amount of reassurance to the general population in certain scenarios but the other options you know if you see men in camouflage or uh, combat fatigues running around uh, trying to do basic uh, providing basic public services it also shows that the other that the other arms of the state have also failed in providing that or meeting that challenge and there is reason for worry so there are two ways you can look at it but yes there's a point to be made that you know should we be waiting around for this uh, e- epidemic to take disastrous proportions before we loop in the armed forces i think uh, the armed forces again uh, uh, at the risk of repeating myself have massive capacity stockpiles and this will probably be a good time to start planning for such a contingency Uh, is it a good idea to maybe bolster certain civilian medical capabilities with the amc yes is it a good time for the army corps of engineers to start planning on creating further uh, quarantine facilities medical facilities uh, yes it is a good idea but uh, i think we should also exercise caution and not call out the army onto the streets uh, every time that there is a national emergency but i think it's important for the armed forces to start planning this is a black swan event uh, so to speak uh, uh, so i am not sure uh, and i think admiral prakash and general huda will be able to better answer this is there any sort of planning in the indian armed forces to deal with such contingencies pandemics biological uh, you know weapons use threat and uh, how the armed forces are prepared to deal with such uh, emergencies yeah maybe we could we could sort of wind up with closing comments by admiral arun prakash and uh, general huda uh, are the defense forces uh, as part of their uh, contingency plans prepared to deal with uh, biological warfare uh, uh, with uh, with an outbreak of a lab created uh, virus uh, how, how do you how do you deal with it i mean because these are all realities of the 21st century okay first about uh... pushan's remark about the presence of the armed forces unnecessarily he's right 
the armed forces should be the last resort of the civilian elected government not the first resort and the duty or the duty to look after civic uh, emergencies is that of the police the civil administration and they should do their job uh, only when they are incapable of doing their job or they are overwhelmed by the uh, event should the armed forces be called out as a last resort having made that point biological warfare chemical warfare is a part of our our training but the armed forces are taught to fight in a environment of chemical or biological warfare against a similar an enemy who attacks you they are not prepared to protect the civilian population of 1.3 billion people against a biological attack if you if you call it so so but of course as been said repeatedly they have huge resources they have huge uh, disciplined force logistics transport aircraft etc uh, which is at the disposal of the nation should should it be required and that's the call is on the civil administration to ask for it general hudra the last 60 seconds to you sir yeah so uh, nbc fighting in the nbc environment as we say fighting in a dirty or contaminated environment is part of the military training Uh, and because of that you have a fair idea of uh, how to deal with these kind of threats uh, there is a, there is a fair amount of uh, what we call protective equipment also uh, available uh, within the military we have things like decontamination stations in case people get contaminated so facilities and and, and a certain amount of infrastructure is available uh, and sure it's i mean if it if it's a very wide outbreak obviously uh, the capacity to handle biological uh, you know epidemics to that extent may not be available but certainly the expertise is there and certain amount of infrastructure is there and apart from that just the capability within the within the military uh, to be able to handle crisis is is enormous uh, and i think what we need to start maybe doing is uh, i'm sure the i'm sure the military has been born of i know hospitals the military hospital in chandigarh here has already called uh, ex servicemen uh, military uh, volunteers to come and help out in the in the hospitals but i think we need to start creating a certain amount of infrastructure that could be required say for quarantine camps for additional uh, hospital beds uh, those kind of facilities uh, i i think need to start come if they're not used fine but suddenly in an emergency if they are required then i think if they are already there on ground it would help a lot thank you everybody thank you admiral arun prakash uh, thank you general huda and uh, of course pushan so we heard uh, views about how the government could uh, gain hugely by involving the defense forces in planning for uh, an ultimate or, or an eventual um, emergency over the covid 19 outbreak and uh, in any case uh, that it would be a good idea to relook at the structure of the ndma and uh, involve the defense forces in the planning stage itself so that everybody is on the same page and uh, no time is wasted in trying to uh, sort of you know getting the defense forces to activate themselves and get into the act thank you once again for your time and uh, we'll meet again